Okay, we are going to start our morning meditation. <coughs> Gently close your eyes. Beautiful Saturday morning. Meditation happening live stream from the temple and also some people in person here at the temple. This is our second day during this pandemic. We open our temple to public. So anyway, you all are here or you are virtually joining me this morning. So thank you so much for your loving, mindful commitment to your own practice. Take few deep long breaths and relax your whole body. Now send your loving thought towards yourself, thinking, I am well, I am happy, I am peaceful. Now send your loving thoughts towards your family. May all of my family members be well, be happy, be peaceful. May no harm come to them. May no difficulties come to them.
remember this loving intention is very powerful practice we all can grow and develop this intention to a higher awareness This is one of the best practice for purification of the mind. Now send your loving thoughts towards all world. May all living being be well, be happy. be peaceful different people different parts of the world different countries different ethnic groups may all of them be well be happy be peaceful Now slowly turn your attention to your breath, which is your life. Every breath you take in, you take out, is taken mindfully. Focus on your natural, ordinary breaths. You are not doing it by force. Naturally happening. You are watching. You are observing. your breath your mind your feelings your emotions you are fully present to this present moment what is happening in your mind and your body
No need to repress your thoughts, no need to control them, just be.
Now observe your mind, observe your body. Your body is relaxed, your mind is calm, tranquil and peaceful. Make a strong determination to practice every day. May peace be with you, may you be well, may you be happy, may you be peaceful. Thank you very much. Please open your eyes. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, so, happy birthday to myself. <laughs> I think that's the best uh, wish I can make to myself today. Anyway, today is my, uh, my birthday conventionally. This is the day I was born into this world. Um, so anyway, I'm thinking life is only a reflection. So I was thinking uh, today I want to reflect about my life. And also maybe this reflection will help you to understand something about your life too. Uh, so when I was in Sri Lanka, uh, you know, very young, you know, the home, I cannot remember they celebrated my birthday. I cannot remember at all. I can remember, um, you know, my parents cut a cake uh, or having gifts. Um, I didn't have that experience at all. So after I left the country, uh, my twenties, um, I was in Australia. I can remember that too. Um, so then I came to the United States, you know, the first time I can remember my thirties, uh, people celebrated my birthday here. It was the uh, first time it was kind of weird. Why it is not conditioned in my mind, you know, I didn't have an idea in my mind, we had to celebrate my birthday or people had to give me gifts or something. I don't have an idea at all. Even now I don't um, feel it. You know, I had to celebrate it. Uh, so I think uh, this is the first time, maybe almost uh, 15, 16 years, I am here at the Blue Lotus for my birthday because I'm always at the summer, I'm out of country and doing my charities. Last year when I was in Sri Lanka, our center in Sri Lanka, uh, they were kind of uh, planning to celebrate my birthday. I, I said the best thing I can do, um, I want from you, uh, you guys, um, I want to have a quiet day. So because every day I'm celebrating life with people, sitting in front of people, I need the quiet day. I was kind of hiding that day. But I know my family, uh, friends, they did uh, lots of things without me that day. I was kind of hiding in somewhere and I enjoy myself anyway. So now think about your culture, the birthday. Where after you're born into this world, after, uh, you know, when you're born into this world, you know, your parents or your grandparents put an idea into your mind, birthday has to celebrate, right? So now you, when you are raising with, you know, the growing with that idea and concept, then what happened? When the birthday comes, you have that expectation, especially when we are children, you know, the, my parents will celebrate my birthday. Uh, Sometimes my parents are sending me messages, you know, to the temple. Oh, you know, the, during this pandemic, we couldn't celebrate my uh, child's birthday. He was so disappointed. He was so upset. He was so mad. He was so angry about the pandemic. He cannot be with the friends. And why is that? I was thinking, this is my reflection. This is not right or wrong. Uh, why is that? When we are young, they put an idea into their head birthday has to celebrate. This is the way it has to celebrate. So I think it is totally fine, you know, how you are celebrating it. It's nothing wrong with that. So anyway, I think um, the day I was born, when I compare my life today, is a totally different story. So today, this morning, because last night I came home, actually midnight is a long drive. And so I went to bed around one, uh, morning <laughs> and so I was thinking oh today I'm you know I'm celebrating my birthday 
And so then I was thinking every day, last many years, I was born into this world every moment. I wake up, I born, I was dying, uh, up and down, good and bad, all those things happen in my life. So when people are looking at my life now, they are always thinking, oh, he's a monk. He has a wonderful life. Yes, I do. I'm so grateful I have a wonderful life. And so, but what you see now, this is not the true story. Because I have a long journey, long story. I had a very difficult childhood experiences with my family because they didn't have enough. However, they did the great job. Then I became a monk. Then I, uh, I was under training. I did all those work. Then all the up and down and emotional difficulties and challenges. Until today, life was full of challenges. Life was full of challenges. But uh, anyway, I know how to put the smile onto my face. I'm really good with that. So I'm always smiling to people and, but there always, even you are smiling, we have a story behind our head. You always something going on. So what I'm telling you, what you see today is not the truth. It is a truth, but there's a long story behind it. So anyway, when I'm reflecting on my life, I feel so happy. However, I did really well. I'm so happy to be here right now in this present moment with you all, all the world's hunger with me. Um, when I was a young monk, my teacher never asked to me go to America or teach to American people or traveling around the world. No idea. I, I heard about America, but I don't know what it is. So anyway, now I'm here in America serving to you all and this is my life. It is going now. So this morning after I wake up, I was thinking, how I have to celebrate my birthday in a proper way. How I have to celebrate my birthday to beneficial to myself and also beneficial to the whole world. Right? So therefore, you know, I started in you know, the fundraiser. Many people donated. I'm so grateful to you all. And um, actually today in Sri Lanka, they donated um, 100 people, 100 families, all the uh, basic groceries for them. During this pandemic, uh, they lost jobs, they cannot go to work and uh, not like here, they have a really difficult time because those poor people, when I was young, they fed me, they gave me education, everything was free. Now I am serving here in this country, still they are happy about it. Then I was thinking I want to give something for those people for my birthday. Actually they did the great job, I saw a couple of pictures and I didn't get all the information yet. We fed 100 families, more to go, and we had to work on the little, little by little. It's a big project during this pandemic to do that. So what I'm suggesting you, I'm asking, as a practitioner, as a mindful practitioner, what we had to do, what I did, I had the thought one day in my mind long years ago many people know i used to be an angry little monk and you can ask these monks they know really well and so you know, i was angry person you know the angry means it's not the bad way anger is anyway bad um, i have a quick temper right i can yell at everybody and so that's my nature giving a hard time to everybody even to my teacher and all the people at the temple uh, it was a very challenging time because that time I can remember they love me, the same time they hate me because of my aggressive nature. Okay, so anyway, one day I had the very sad feeling. Uh, I thought, you know, I don't want to live like this anymore. So being angry, uh, being mad, being upset always doesn't help. So then I was thinking that I have to go opposite of this, opposite direction from this. So then what I did, I created the wholesome thought in my mind, uh, just one thought, very simple thought I created in my mind long years ago. I want to grow with this wholesome thoughts called the loving kindness. So I was angry. Now I had to go opposite direction. What is the direction I have? I have to start this thought in my mind. I call the wholesome thoughts. It, it makes sense, you know, the wholesome thoughts. When you hear the wholesome source, maybe in so many different things come to your mind. So don't make it very complicated. 
right wholesome thoughts means it that thought has to beneficial to self and beneficial to other people that's it very simple so then i had that wholesome thoughts in my mind then right after i i have that my mind then i clearly i recognize that thought it is in my mind right now that's very important just having a thought is not enough then after few days when we are uh, go through this thought and so then you had recognized i have this thought in established in my mind it is not perfect but it is established okay so then when i recognize that thought then i start to live with it this makes sense i start to live with that thought not just a thought i recognize it now i have to live with it that means i put into the action for myself and other people i did all my work every day even people are criticizing me or mad with me doesn't matter for me i always really developing and living in that quality so now many years later when i am reflecting my life today i can see that quality is really growing in my mind really developing in my many different direction i can see that quality of i uh, choose loving kindness is really growing different direction in my life not just for beneficial for myself and also now think about last you know the 20 years being here in illinois how many thousands of people who came to the temple how many thousands of people around the country and the world uh being myself and practicing my quality of loving kindness how many people receive the benefit and same time i receive the benefit too so when i am really quality then i realize and i have emotional joy with that quality that you know it is radiant in my mind and same time i have joy in my mind because of that quality it makes sense to everybody i have joy now so that joy is a emotional joy in mental joy in my mind so then i experience when i have that mental joy in my mind is turned into physical joy too is effect into my body so like 15 um, i think maybe 15 years ago i am almost dying i had some physical problems i was dying and doctor said you have to get ready the for the surgery otherwise you have to figure it out what to do and so i decided i'm not going to do that so that's how i woke up in one morning i don't want to do it i don't have to have a second thought from somebody talking to somebody as an idea but one morning i was sitting and meditating i was deciding i practice loving kindness many many years i help thousands of people in the world even i have lots of physical difficulties one last thing happen in my life i'm going to die that's the worst case scenario i prepared for my mind for that then i still develop my quality of loving kindness that day i was sitting i decided i am not going to do the surgery after they cut it they cannot put it back <laughs> you know if they can do it i am ready to do it but then so now 15 years later i don't have issue now so why i am telling you this when you practice loving kindness when you have this wholesome thought in your mind then you recognize it is happening is the good word it is conceive conceive in your in your mind and your body so when you conceive it you know like a baby so then what we have to do we have to raise it so what i did many years i raised whatever conceive in my mind i start to raise it i put the energy into it i put my power into it i was thinking about it i was wake up with it i have a, you know you know it's not a disorder but i like to use that word i have a disorder if i cannot give something to somebody i feel something missing in my life i always emotionally uh materially i always i want to give something to somebody that you know every day when i do that i feel good that means i was developing that quality then is effect into my body my mind now what i am doing now rest of my life i am going to live with this this is my meditation practice so that what i am asking you today this morning my birthday 
don't make a big deal as a meditation oh my god i had to meditate i had to sit one hour i had to go to a 10 day retreat i had to do this and that you know if you want to do that please do but this is very simple just bring one thought into your mind this loving actually very powerful thought in our lives you can bring that thought into your mind let it to grow let it grow but it has to be very honest when you are developing that quality don't believe every day you are going to be very peaceful no even after i got that idea into my my mind i had the so many terrible and miserable moments in my life it is not joyful but anyway all those miserable mo- the moments in my life i turn into loving kindness and to benefit to myself and the benefit to the world some situation i remember i feel this is it i'm mad i'm angry i don't want to do this and you know it's so crazy i want to be crazy <laughs> and all those thoughts happen but the good thing after that the thought conceive in the mind we feel like the baby how mother raised the baby i have this beautiful baby in my mind and my body i had to raise it however many years i gave my all my energy and time to develop this thought so whatever i am doing in the world right now because of the energy of loving kindness so therefore i am asking you all are celebrating your birthday one day of each year so i am asking if you want to do a party please do it it is totally fine nothing wrong with that but at the same time you know bring that wholesome thought into your mind my birthday that means i am getting closer to the death which is totally fine same time do something for the world do something for the world even you have that powerful intention to do something for the world you cannot finish it you have so much to do but your intention is so powerful now think about these 25 30 people here if you have that kind of wholesome thoughts every day you are planting in your mind if you are let it grow you can make this world you know the beautiful place so that's what i am thinking today the power of loving kindness and so i'm so grateful to all of you you know i feel i'm the one of the luckiest monk in the world why i gave so much to the world as a single person i gave so much for the world sometimes it is overwhelming what i'm here from the people so and now today i felt this morning i received that much from the people it is this uh, is starting yesterday evening it is bombarding all the messages thousands of people sometimes i cannot remember who they are i cannot remember where they are coming from no idea some people but they are bombarding all the messages their stories and pictures and non stop so then i want to reply to each person but it's another whole 24 hour job so it is so powerful that means i am receiving whatever i gave to the world now i am receiving it that's why i said i am so lucky to be here in this world right now i don't know what will happen tomorrow but i am so happy and so grateful to all the blue lotus sangha and my world sangha all the communities around the world and who helped me who supported me and without your kindness and compassion i don't think i can go this far in this world because i'm just single person i did my job as much as i can then you supported for my journey that's why this beautiful place is here that's why a couple of other blue lotus temple around the world and that's how all other people get support now think about i was in sri lanka those people supported me those poor people then i came to this country i help you all now you are helping me back to help them how powerful that right give and receiving always we are going around that is the power of loving kindness so therefore i'm asking only thing you have to do today go and plant a seed just one thought in your mind forget about all other vipassana meditation inside meditation all those techniques and ideas forget about it just go and plant one thought in your mind let it grow that is my birthday gift for you all 
Okay, so thank you so much. Thank you.
way you can easily make up your mind if you want to go further. I hope you'll stick around. Number four, uh, 1969, right, Dante? Yeah. In 1969, Dante Sujata was born in Sri Lanka, a tiny island off the coast of India. Sri Lanka is broadly considered the historical gatekeeper of Buddhist history and tradition. Dante became a monk at age 11 after informing his parents that if they did not consent to his ordination, he would throw himself off the bridge into the Mahabharata. And in 2013, I stood on that bridge and looked at that river with them and told me the story. It was quite a moment. I'm sure glad his parents consented. Vande's uh, father owns a machine shop, and his mother is illiterate, neither having access to anything Americans would consider school. He was taught that loving one another and the Buddhist teachings are the road map to life. Bhante Sujata is described as a spiritual leader. He is revered across the world and booked years in advance for people seeking his teachings on loving kindness and how to find practical spiritual lessons to living with more joy. Bhante and I are both students and, uh, of the teachings of the Buddha, not necessarily Buddhists, and we apply the teachings to our actions. I go in and start again. Bante goes to far less often. Bante and I are more than a student and teacher. Over the last two decades, we've been around the world on crazy adventures, meditating in moldy church basements and rooftop gardens and inner cities and exotic monasteries that fit, that fit the seeker's imagination of nirvana. We've raised lots of money for cool projects, taught workshops together, hiked around the world. I've deepened my commitment through vows and precepts, and he's expanded his reach through a clearer understanding of how true Americans see things. Bonte would prefer to never touch money. He owns next to nothing, travels for three months at a time in a single small carry-on with fresh robes and shaving cream. He never takes a day off, ever, has no free time, and doesn't do anything that isn't in direct service to others. It's extreme beyond what most could ever comprehend. I often walk through my days full of shame. Some days I wake up with racing thoughts, I hate my looks or my tone of voice, I'm positive I might be alone forever and alone. I live with the certainty that I have either overshared and sound ridiculous and egoic, or undershared and I'm willing to do anything to hide. In contrast, Bonte ends each day with a smile and says, I did my best today, no matter how good or bad it turned out. Bonte runs a chain of temples and meditation centers. And he likes to say our businesses don't have much difference, only different words. My professional and personal mission statement is clear and direct. Work hard, tell the truth, love people. Bonte is a sparring report to promote individual peace of mind, compassion for all beings, spiritual growth, and an ethical way of life based on Buddhist teachings. Bonte grew up in a one-room he has the same baggage that many of us do, but he spent his entire life transforming suffering into generous action. He was awarded the highest honor in his lineage, being named Chief Samanayaka of North America in 2013 for his humanitarian work and for spreading Buddhist teaching to the West. We make fun of him all the time about the saying, No ego, he always responds. I absolutely. Bonte only sees the good in people. I ask him to notice the other parts of them, sometimes for his own safety or for the well-being of our temple and community, but he cannot see it. He was given an x-ray vision into people's purest hearts. 
Or maybe it's that he's earned that vision. After all, early in his life, he battled huge anger issues. It took him years of hard work to soften his heart and retrain his natural instincts to lead with kindness. When I met Dante, I already understood some of where my craziness came from, and I had a ravenous desire to pursue the happiness. But I did not know how to obtain it, and I didn't understand why I felt so out of place. An unexpected depression had descended on me. But my first hello with love, Dante, as Augustine Burroughs promised me, was a turning point in my confusion and suffering. In my time, as his friend and his student, now his cohort, I've watched this feature for tens of thousands of people. Monte struck off from his homeland with not much more than an alms bowl and a cloth robe. He left his family and friends and supportive monastic teachers to live in Woodstock, Illinois, a nearly all-white Midwestern community that held a Ku Klux Klan rally on the town square the exact month he arrived. He started teaching meditation with only two students, and on the first night he prayed and wouldn't come back because he was so scared to keep teaching. Monte has a mystical quality about him. I have witnessed his transformative power a thousand times over. He shows people how to open their hearts, let joy rise. He might have a master's degree in Buddhism, but rarely shares intellectual knowledge. Instead, he shares his own stories of how practice changed him and is changing the world. The more I observe life, the more I realize the struggles and suffering of the world will never cease or change. Suffering and struggle are immovable facts, basic realities. It is within all of us the change has to happen. Number 37. My middle name is William, after my dad's twin brother, and it's as common as it gets. In stark contrast to common Sri Lankan names with Buddhist meanings like Chatura, Foster Genius, or Duminda, Bodhi Tree, Bhante Sujata's birth name is Neil, named after Neil Armstrong. First man to walk on. So, would you guys all help me sing to our big grandma happy birthday with your nice son? <laughs> Since we can't have real gay guys symbolic for cupcake. <laughs> and the truth is, it's truly symbolic because I know my family can eat it. <laughs> and then after practice, we do have cupcakes for you all. And because of our social distancing situation, you could just uh, take them on your way out. Thank you, Tyler. <laughs> you have your mic here? Ah. Okay, everybody ready? I'm so happy I'm one. <laughs> now I become one nurse, right?
with some of our board members. We, I think we canceled and then restarted Taste of Shirlanka maybe eight times in a week. Uh, because one day I felt like we should cancel, and the next day like, oh, we're fine. This virus will be resolved by then. It's a week away. Um, it sort of feels so ridiculous now that we're having such naive little conversations about the Taste of Shirlanka after all that's done in the world. Soon after we did make the final decision to cancel it, then we had to, to reconcile how do we cancel meditation and how do we uh, close down a place of uh, such incredible refuge and resource to rebuild people in the midst of such fear, fear and panic and change. Um, the two things feel really counter to each other, don't they? Like here, the temple maybe since since this has happened has become more needed than ever before, uh, and yet become less available than ever before in a physical form. And so we really wrestled with that, and uh, we had many long nights of discussion about what's more dangerous, us being together or us not being together. And the the, the most amazing result. Uh, is what I want to share with you. I think, I think among the, the, the numerous blessings of these interesting times for us has been the realization that this temple means nothing. That this is just a building. These are just floors and wood and bricks. And the temple is within all of us. And the whole reason we've been coming here to practice is to be ready for these times. To be able to renew that part of us, uh, after we enter the chaos, to be get centered, to pause, uh, to be a lamp for those without light, as we say at the end of every meditation. And this physical space has no value to that. There's no correlation. And so we've been able to uh, just alter the way we do things. And so the most the most interesting things have happened. We closed the temple. And I think for a week we didn't really know what to do, and then somebody pulled out an old iPhone and said, well, why don't we try streaming it? It was really bad, you all may remember. Uh, I think we didn't have audio really, the phone fell a few times, and Bhante was nervous and sweating in his robes. He's like, I don't like this, there's no people. Um, and it, was, it wasn't great, and then the next week it was a little better. And by the third week, we started to watch the views. And I don't know how many people do we fit in the temple, a few hundred, if we're really packed, but we don't get a few hundred for every meditation, sometimes 10, sometimes 50, maybe 80 on a Saturday. We were starting to see numbers like 1,800, 2,500, 3,500, 10,000. And so in the face of what appeared to be such sorrow and tragedy, we, we observed our ability to offer refuge, grow and grow and grow. And, and our physical space became even more irrelevant as, as we continue to realize that the reach is, is however we show up. And we have to do it in the that doesn't mean we want to have to do it. And so now, every day, we are filled with messages and letters and comments of people who are far away from us, sometimes in other countries, that are showing up uh, online and, and getting access to this practice. And I just don't think that there could be a way to measure the impact of that and the good that that's doing in the world. And so um, while we are back here in a very limited form, uh, we are still doing fulfilling Bhante's original mission every single day. And so I just want to, I want to extend a lot of gratitude to the board for helping make that happen and to our amazing staff these monks who are uh, just day in and day out like right, a constant drumbeat holding this space for us and keeping this practice alive for all of us to access. And so uh, I'm grateful. Bhante, I'm so grateful for you. I'm glad you were born. I'm so glad, grateful for Amma and her giving birth to you. And uh, here we are doing our thing. So this is our second week back in the building. The way this is working is we uh, in consultation with the CDC and the guidelines around, we made the decision that we feel safe with about 25 people in the building. Uh, and we've chosen to not make an announcement about the temple being reopened uh, with any permanency. Uh, right now we were open last week, and today we're open today, and I'm not gonna promise you we'll be open next Saturday. We're
We're not in the business of making promises right now. We're trying to be present and see how we feel. And Bhante's and my uh, communications have been, let's, let's take it day by day and see how safe we feel, feel see how, how honoring it feels to all of us and our safety and our needs. Um, and so that's what we're doing. Right now it's felt really good. Uh, there has been some, some struggle. I think that people have an overwhelming desire to help the monks. Sometimes they have an inability to withstand that desire, and the monks have absolutely no capacity to stop them. They won't do it. And so um, I'm asking everybody to really increase your mindfulness that they will not say to you, please don't, but they really do not want you to. Uh, Bonte's uh, talked a little bit about his health. He's being humble about it. It is uh, precarious, and has been for most of his journey. And uh, we really don't want him sick. You know, we want him to be well and joyful and be able to continue to fulfill his mission. So uh, I appreciate all of you who signed up in advance and I ask everybody to continue to be so mindful that if we really love him and are really grateful, let's not help him, let's keep our distance. The other thing I want to say is that this is a free country. We all have varying points of view. Um, and we are hearing from some people that wearing a mask in the building is violating their constitutional rights. We have people show up and say they're not going to wear a mask and they're we certainly honor everyone's uh, individual choices, and I just want to be clear that all the decisions here and any frustration about that should be directed to me and not the monks. And obviously recognize that we have a responsibility uh, to follow the law and to adhere to guidelines and to try to be as honoring as we can to all points of view, and so that's what we're doing. And I think we've done a really good job of that. So uh, what I would say is thank you all for living your practice so, so beautifully out in the world. We're really excited to get back here on our, uh, you know, in a more traditional capacity, and we have no idea when that will be. We're going to continue to check in. Um, I'm reminded of a morning, Bhante, you can correct my mistakes here, but uh, a number of years ago, uh, Bhante uh, agreed to hide the Adam speak with me, which is, can you describe Adam speak for a second? What's the symbol? It's a, the, the holy place, it's a Buddha's uh, footprint is there. He so, visited Sri Lanka uh, three times. One time he, you know, he left his footprint there. That's the whole site. Yeah, and uh, so it's a very, it's considered one of the sacred pilgrimages uh, for the Buddhists, and uh, it's quite a journey. We started at midnight, uh, and we hiked up the mountain all night. Uh, it's eight miles in one direction, almost all stairs, and so we got there uh, in time for the sunrise. But before we we got up. Before we began that journey, uh, we were at the, the meditation center and um, tell people about what Sri Lankans believe about geckos when they hear a gecko. A gecko? Is a gecko. Is you know, they are like a lizard. Lizard, right? They are kind of uh, fortune tellers, or uh, always telling you know when they are kind of uh, saying something, they think oh gecko said too. <laughs> it's confirming. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so we sat around the, the breakfast, uh, which was after dinner, we were leaving at midnight, and uh, Bhante said, I'm not sure if we're going to go or not, we have to get quiet and wait and see. And I was like, dude, I just traveled 10,000 miles, we are flying to the mountain. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he says, we have to wait for confirmation. And then he just sat there quiet, and I'm like looking around, and I'm like a little mad, and, and, and then all of a sudden, we heard the gecko. Good to go, and he got up and jumped into bed. And so, one of the big lessons he's taught me is how important it is to check in with your heart and to not make plans until your heart guides you. Use your heart as a GPS. And so, that's how we're going to operate this. That's how we're going to manage this temple. Um, we really appreciate the online donations. Uh, I want to acknowledge that this is a very difficult time and precarious uh, experience for us uh, as stewards of this place. And as you can imagine, uh, there's a lot of resources needed to support the temple and the monastics, and uh, people are not here to donate. So uh, we did try to pivot to some online donations, and we're sure grateful for all of that. If everybody who showed up online and gave a dollar, we would probably pay off the mortgage based on the number of views we're getting. <laughs> but uh, until then, uh, we just ask everybody to check in with your own situation, and if you feel called and you, you have the ability, we'd appreciate any support. Every dollar counts. Um, just because the temple has been closed, as we all know across the whole world, that doesn't mean they'll stop.
so I'm just here to say thank you all for that support and please uh, consider keeping it up. And last but not least, happy birthday, my dear friend. I love you. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you.